Have you ever thought about starting to offer websites that are a little bit more on the complex spectrum, like online courses or memberships or e-commerce? If that's you, then I am excited to bring this episode of the Subscription Web Design Podcast to you. Welcome in. My name is Steve Schramm, if you're new around here. And in this episode, I want to tell you about something that has really made a difference for us. You see, a lot of people are focused on simple websites. In fact, oftentimes, especially when you think about the subscription model, you're thinking in terms of ultra simple websites, maybe even template websites. And by the way, I'm not against that. I think that's a good way to go. But if you're currently in the mindset of template or simple custom websites, and you're thinking that you might want to level up doing some different kind of websites like e-commerce or online courses or membership sites, and if you want to kind of fit that into the subscription model, well, you are in the right place. So let me tell you how this sort of started for me. So I... I've been into the online marketing world for quite some time now, and I have always been fascinated by the idea of the membership model, right? Uh, This is part of the reason why this is the subscription web design podcast you're listening to uh, or watching, right? I love the subscription mindset and the subscription model and being able to have a longstanding relationship with either members or students or clients or customers, however your particular subscription business might work. And because of this, I've always been in circles where that sort of thing was being taught. People were being taught how to build an online business via a membership model. And naturally, because I was in those environments and having some of those conversations, and I was the tech guy in the mix at the time, I ended up building a lot of websites for folks who were like that. Uh, Learning management slash online course sites membership sites, and even getting into a little bit of e-commerce, which of course, e-commerce is a bit of a spectrum. There's physical products, e-commerce, and that's a lot different than digital products, e-commerce, but they are both e-commerce and one can lead into the other. So I think that each of you should really consider and take a a hard look at whether you might want to start offering services like this to set yourself apart, because that's the big differentiator in the world we live in today. It can be so easy to become commoditized, right? I mean, one minute, if you were a copywriter, your job was to, to write marketing copy, website copy, you were in demand. And then ChatGPT comes along and your job is seriously in danger. Now, don't get me wrong, actual sales copywriters who are you know, in demand, have a, a skill set and a pedigree and all of that will survive, but the market will be drastically cut out because you can do some pretty impressive work with the right prompts and AI. And web design is no different. In web design, we're seeing AI already start to take some market share and to establish a position in the marketplace on certain kind of websites. And for you, as a website designer, you got to be thinking about how you can differentiate yourself, how you can make your services a selling point and something that somebody wants versus something Uh, that they feel like they can go get online uh, via an AI website builder or via the ever-decreasing prices of a marketplace like Fiverr or Upwork. So in order to differentiate yourself, there are a few things you can do. Of course, niching down is one. We've talked about that a lot. But a lot of people don't realize that another way to sort of niche, and I put that in air quotes, is to actually build different kinds of websites, websites with a little bit more complexity to them. And I think this is a great way to do it. So if you are someone who wants to dive in and start building, you know, membership sites or online course sites or e-commerce sites that sell products, then this could be a great way to differentiate you because in my opinion, based on what I'm seeing, it's going to be some time before AI could possibly do that, um, at least do it well, especially when you're talking about having to Um, individually create products and online learning management like content pages and things like that. There's a lot that goes into it beyond just slapping some generic images and text up on a website and a lot of technical back-end work that is going to be around for some time. So I think this could be a great way to go. So let me talk about some things that you're probably going to want to consider, some tools you may want to use as you get diving into this world. The gold standard that I have to mention is WooCommerce. WooCommerce is just really hard to beat 
in terms of its market share. It's actually owned by Automatic, the same company that's responsible for and behind the continual development of WordPress. And so it's hard to ignore the possibilities that come along with WooCommerce. WooCommerce is amazing. It's very flexible. There are a lot of uh, additional plugins and support uh, that are developed for, for it. And so you'll be able to accomplish most of what you want to accomplish using WooCommerce, whether you're selling digital products or physical. The big problem here is that they nickel and dime you. Even recurring billing is not possible for free on WooCommerce, at least not that I'm aware of. You have to actually buy additional modules. And you would think, oh, well, okay, I'll buy the recurring billing module and that'll get me everything I need. Well, not necessarily, because if you want to do memberships and you want to have a membership site, well, you're actually going to need the memberships module and the subscriptions module, each of which are $200 a year. Okay. So it's kind of not so cut and dry, uh, depending on what you want to do. And if you have advanced needs on shipping rules and things like that, then you will need to, um, to engage some of these additional providers. So yeah, WooCommerce is free, but you're going to need some additional things in order to really make it work in most cases. The other problem with WooCommerce is it's not simple to use. It's actually quite difficult to use. And it can be very, very confusing. If you're just diving in, it can be really intimidating to see all those settings, all those menus. You don't really know where things are or where to look for things. It can definitely be confusing. So WooCommerce is something that is almost unavoidable to learn in terms of e-commerce. But it's not that way anymore, okay? So while I say that it's very important for you to do that, there are ways to get started now without using a tool like WooCommerce, and that's to use a tool like Shorecart. Now, I am a huge fan of Shorecart, and in fact, the whole Shorecrafted line of products, Shorecart, Shore Members, and um, Shore Triggers, all three of these things, and I'm, I'm sure more are coming. In fact, there's already Shore Writer. They're an AI writer, um, although not as heavily marketed or really considered in that suite of WordPress-specific products. And so... These are products that are available to help you get started, and they're actually quite complex, but the way that they're done is with a veneer of simplicity. So in other words, they are able to accomplish a lot of what you would actually want to accomplish on a website, but the way that you accomplish them via these products is very, very simple. And I've got different videos here on this channel, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that actually go into Shortcut. So even if you're listening on audio right now, I would encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and you can actually find some videos that I've done there with Shortcut and Shore members and looking at the Shorecrafted suite of products. And there's lots of other great YouTube videos on them as well. And those will show you sort of how to get started with looking at memberships and even uh, physical products. I don't have any physical product videos, but I'm sure there are others who do uh, on getting started with these tools. So Shortcut, Shore members, and Shore Triggers, which is kind of an integrations plugin, are really amazing. They're from the team at um, Adam Prezer, uh, WP Crafter, and he's got different partners in these enterprises that uh, that help bring this stuff to light. But man, they're doing a great job. They really listen to their customers, and I think that you'll be impressed with what you can do with these products uh, without much knowledge going into them at all. So um, I think that those are some tools you need to consider. If you're getting into... Let's be more specific on each one, okay? So we talked about e-commerce already. Really, uh, WooCommerce is the big thing there to learn. And then Shorecart as well is another one that you can learn. And then all the add-ons and other things that are in those ecosystems. If you're looking at doing learning management, you might consider tools like LearnDash, Lifter LMS, or my favorite, which is Tutor LMS, okay? These are awesome plugins that can integrate with so many different things. I chose Tutor LMS because it looks great out of the box. It works well with Divi. And it has lots of functionality on the back end, but again, presented in a very simple package. Another reason I chose Tutor LMS is because, and I don't know if it's the same now, but back in the day when I bought it, which wasn't that long ago, it was actually a lifetime deal. I think it was around $700 or so for life instead of renewing your Learn Dash or Lifter LMS subscription every one to three years. I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to buy a lifetime deal. And so I did. And I grabbed that with Tutor LMS, and I love it. If you're looking at membership specifically, there are a couple players, big players. Access Ally is one that you need to learn if you're going to be doing very, very complex work. If you do 
lots of complex stuff with team management and sign up links and um, you know, just needing to have serious levels of access control on your projects, then Access Ally is a great tool. We've got a couple Access Ally sites in our lineup. Another great tool uh, is MemberPress. Okay, so MemberPress is another one of these that's kind of like WooCommerce. It's old school. It's a big player. There's lots of integrations for it, but there's things that you're going to have to pay for to add on if you want to. And the reality is, it's a little confusing, okay? There's a lot to it. It's really hard to use. It's just, unfortunately, not the best executed membership plugin, okay? Again, good, functional, extendable, but harder to use. And, you know, it could cost you a lot more in the long run. My favorite plugin these days to use for membership site access control is Shore Members, okay? Which may not be a surprise to you by now. Shore members, and I've got some videos specifically on getting set up with this and why I love it so much for basic access control on WordPress, is just, in my opinion, bar none, the best at doing this simply. Membership plugins can be a huge, huge rabbit hole. And I got to tell you, Shore members just knocks it out of the park with how easy to use it actually is and set up. It's something that I have to show you, right? So just go find one of those videos on my YouTube channel talking about Shore members and just trust me when I tell you, so easy to get set up and working with this plugin for basic access control. And it has a lot going on under the hood as well. So don't let its simplicity fool you. If you do want to get your feet wet with these things, membership sites, e-commerce, learning management, my recommendation is wholeheartedly to start simpler, to dive into the Shore members and the Shore cart options and go from there. What I like about them too is I know that I've mentioned, um, let me let me just back up and say, I'm not against paying for plugins. Obviously, we should pay for good premium plugins. We should actually want to support these developers so they continue doing good work so that we can do great work for our clients. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm in full support of that. It's the model of how they actually charge that is what matters to me. And it, it, maybe it's just a preferential thing. Maybe you like being able to get the base software for free and then add on what you need. What the people at Shorecraft that has done is actually create um, packages and plans that work for different people at different stages of business. Okay. And so I want to say for uh, Shorecart, for, uh, for pro, uh, excuse me, for um, subscription web design, I pay $200 a year. I want to say it's their pro plan, but I'm not entirely sure. And uh, I pay $200 a year and I get a nice suite of uh, products and services and features and things. Um, that they give me to be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish. And um, again, like many other things, if I needed more functionality than that, I would just have to upgrade to the next tier, which I believe if I have this right, is their business tier. Okay. So I like that I can just pay one yearly fee and I can get a number of the things that I need in my business all set up right there. And it's within one software solution. Another thing on that is uh, with their free offering, you actually get a lot more than what you get for free with other people. Just one example of that is you actually get um, pretty powerful recurring uh, payment functionality built right into the free version of Shorecart rather than going with WooCommerce and paying $200. So it's amazing what you can actually get just for free with these tools. And then if you need more functionality than that, you can add more later. Okay, two more quick things I want to talk about if you decide to go this route to actually start working on more complex websites. The first one is that you need to familiarize yourself with the idea of sales funnels, okay? Sales funnels in the world I'm talking about, e-commerce and memberships and online course sales, sales funnels are necessary in order to get the kind of uh, average cart purchase value, okay, average cart value um, from these sales that you need in order to make a business like this work. In other words, if you are selling an online course for a client, ideally, that online course is going to upsell after the purchase for the course into a coaching package or to a planner that helps them implement what they have in the course or to, you know, an additional onboarding call or something like that that gives you the ability to make the cart value more expensive on any given product. And again, that's just good business, right? It's good business when you have a customer who is buying to get as much money from that customer as you can. I hate to say it like that, but it's it's true. Okay, this is business. We're not in this for free. We're trying to make money. And so uh, we want to provide as much value for the customer or the client as we possibly can, but we want them to give us things in exchange in the form of payment 
for that value. So we provide value, they provide payment, and the more of each of those that we can give each other, the happier everybody is. So learning how to use sales funnels is huge for both digital and physical products. And then the last thing I'll say on this before we wrap up is just simply the idea of making a name for yourself. Again, one of the reasons why my business has been as successful as it is is because we are building a reputation for being able to execute on these kind of websites well, okay? And it separates us from the market. We're differentiated. We don't have to compete with a lot of the other players out there because they're not even playing the same game that we are. And that makes a huge difference. So if you want that kind of power and ability in your business, this is one way that you can do it. Sure, hyper niching down into a particular target, or as my friend Adam likes to say, a segment of a segment is another great way to do that. This is a way that we've done it without having to get necessarily specific into the kind of websites we build. For example, we uh, have worked on management uh, for a guitar teacher, online guitar teacher. We have done the technical implementation for the membership side of a graduate program management advisor. And then we have done a couple of medical projects and everything in between, okay? So it's really a different way to think about niching down rather than industry, we're niching down on the complexity website or the type of website. And these are options that are available to you as well. So I really hope you found that helpful. I would appreciate it if you did, either leaving a comment and liking and sharing and subscribing on YouTube, or if you're listening on audio, please leave us a review on the audio version of the podcast. That would just make my heart so happy and I'd love to hear from you there as well. This has been a very successful podcast for us and I'm thrilled at the success of it and the reach of it and how many people are getting help. But I would love to hear from you too. So don't stay silent. Let me know you're listening or watching. All right, you guys take care. See you in the next episode and we'll catch you later.